Hi, Internet. I'm Steve, and welcome to Raffo. We are here today with Carly. How do you pronounce your last name, Carly? <laughs> Kelstrom. The Kel- uh, J is silent. Ah, okay. Yes. Carly Kelstrom, Hello. who is the person behind Dragon Woodshop, creating these. Yes. They're incredible. Carly, it is lovely to be talking with you today. Um, it's great to meet you. <laughs> yeah, this is fantastic. This is really my first time being introduced to you, uh, and likely there are at least a few other people in the land of the internet that have not heard of you. A Tell few. us about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm flattered that you think so highly of me, <laughs> and that there may be only a few people who haven't heard of me. <laughs> uh, so yes, I am Carly. Uh, most of you who are on the uh, collectors Sanderson Collectors Discord or maybe the Chicken da- Scouts Discord may know me just as Carly K. I am a graphic designer by trade, which happens to work really well when it comes to my laser work. Uh, I originally started out with like my logos and my graphic design, branched from that into, <laughs> funnily enough, dragon armor. Um, so I made a lot of chain mail and scale mail armor. Then my husband uh, approached me and was was like, uh, you know, let's, uh, let's get you a glow porch. And I was like, a glow porch? I was like, I don't know the first thing about laser cutting or <laughs> or any of that or files up he's like no no no, it's okay and like i tried to talk him out of it and then i i you know it it all went from there there was lots lots of learning curves that's for sure Mm -hmm. uh luckily i already knew a lot of the basics when it came to uh file design and certainly i have learned even more in the last two years since this all began i am a mom of two i have two daughters uh nine and four my husband we've been married for what feels like forever, um, <laughs> but it's really only about six years. <laughs> forever in a positive uh, way, I hope. But, indeed, yeah. indeed. In fact, he'll even tell people at, at his work, he'll be like, yeah, you know, we've been married for like 15 years. And I'm like, honey, <laughs> you've got your math wrong there, but I love you. <laughs> well, what first got you into the realm of Sanderson? Oh, boy. So um, it was funnily enough, not Wheel of Time. I say that because I actually adored the Wheel of Time books as a teenager. And so I was reading them, you know, throughout high school. And then there was the whole news of Robert Jordan dying. And I just, I was like, you know, that kind of sucks. But I didn't really understand what that meant, which was stupid because I read like hundreds of books every year. You'd think I would (laughs) understand what that meant. And I didn't actually know until later. I knew that the books had been finished or were continuing to be finished because uh-huh. he didn't write Memory of Light until a little bit later on. So I knew that they had been worked on. And so I was I was like, you know, I'll read them eventually anyway. Married my husband. He's like, you know, there's this author I really think that you would like because he's, you know, a big book reader and everything. Because I think it was that he was listening. He, he does audiobooks. He was listening to Warbreaker. This was the funny part. And so he's like, honey, I want to preface this. As I'm explaining to you what is happening in this book, don't freak out <laughs> <laughs> because that would be a very odd book to walk in on somebody listening to, uh-huh. especially those first scenes with Siri. Honey, I like, promise this, is this really isn't weird. erotica. This is... <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> um, so he's telling me what's happening because he's, he's like, I kind of need to like talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> so he talks to me about it and he's like, you know, I actually think you'd really like this author. And I was finishing up some Wheel of Time stuff and I was finishing up, you know, various books left and right because... I was, you know, in the middle of how many different books. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually don't read multiple books at a time. I read one book at a time, but I will tend to do series a few at a time. So I'll do like, I was doing like Warrior Cats with like Wheel of Time with like my 50th reread of Harry Potter or something like that. So he says to me, he's like, I think he would actually really like Brandon Sanderson. And he's like, he actually is the one who did... The Wheel of Time. And so I'm looking at my book. I'm like, oh, yeah, it does say Brandon Sanderson on it, doesn't it? I'm just, you know, reading it thinking Robert Jordan. So he suggests that I start with Mistborn. He's like, I think you would be OK starting with Way of Kings because being a Wheel of Time fan, mm-hmm. he's like, you you would be You'd OK with this. have less of a but learning curve there. Yes. Yeah. Um, but he's he's like, you know, I think you should start with Mistborn just because he he really knows my taste in, in books and TV shows and whatever. And that's how it all began. Mistborn is my favorite book in the Cosmere what is your favorite book in the Cosmere I know this is going to be very like cliche probably but (laughs) I really love Warbreaker it's so I just I love color Mm -hmm. I think there's so much fun that can be had with color it's so vibrant my husband and I are working on our own video game and we want color we we don't want it to be dark and dreary like Skyrim or too fairy-ish like 
Infinity Nikki, but we want there to be color in it. And just the idea of draining color out of things as a source of power. I was like, this is so unique. And it was exciting for me. Um, plus, it was always funny to tease him about it when I was reading series stuff. But yeah, like, I don't know. That's also kind of hard because every book is also its own thing, right? Mm -hmm. You've got Mistborn, which is a heist. I mean, in a sense, oh, yeah, like absolutely. somebody actually asked this in a recent intentionally blank episode was, is it a food heist? I mean, yeah, for Alamancers, it is a food <laughs> heist. Um, and then, in, uh, you know, you've got Stormlight Archives, which is an epic fantasy sword and sandals type thing. Elantris, which is just, you know, this insane mystery mm -hmm. i would love if he did a rewrite of elantris to be honest just to really do more of that mystery and that yeah. politics oh, i love that bring but it up to just his warbreaker. standard of writing warbreaker now. is like beautiful and colorful and i'm like yes i'm all there for it <laughs> so have you read lost metal yes i have mm, so w mm. without any spoilers <laughs> what were your thoughts about lost metal so I didn't know that Lost Metal, the whole Era 2 <clears throat> stuff, is really Era 1.5. It was more of an accident. <laughs> like so, originally, yeah. Yeah, and so Lost Metal just kind of ends. And I'm like, hold up. What about this? What about that? What about that other thing over there? And what happened to this person? What the heck is going on here? And then I'm also mm -hmm. like bawling my face off because I'm reading it at the same time as my husband's listening to it. And inadvertently, Ooh. I always end up a couple sentences ahead of him because I... I I read very fast. And so I'm like bawling and he's looking over at me like, oh crap, it's coming, isn't it? And then he <laughs> starts kind of like sniffling a little bit because no spoilers, but I mean, Sander Lanch has always gets you to tear up mm -hmm. somehow. So, but man, that was just a very awkward ending in a way because I was like, I have so many questions. I'm not even sure if any, some of these are going to be answered. I agree. I do think the ending feels a lot more like it's a setup for the next era. In a way, I really enjoy that. There are a lot of questions that weren't answered and a lot of other questions that were raised. Sanderson is being very intentional in connecting the eras a lot more clearly and and yeah. uh, directly than with Era 1 and Era 2. There was actually a comment in a Cosmere Facebook group and somebody was like, it just feels like a lot of fan service because he's like making all these overt connections and stuff. I'm like, that's called getting towards the middle of the story. <laughs> like, he kind of <laughs> needs to start telling us more bluntly what some of these connections uh -huh. are. And plus, I like it because I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, the, the gloves are definitely off in this one in terms of at least connecting everything off. else. They're off maybe like a few fingers. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you watching, my. Lost Metal Cosmere Connections video, it's coming. So you mentioned before that you are a graphic designer by trade. Yes. Uh, looking at your website, you have mm -hmm. quite the array of different interests and experience. How did you get involved with so many things? Like, did that all start with graphic design? So my degree is technically web design and development. I took a, okay. I, I was able to take a lot of graphic design classes, though, as part of that, because I wanted my focus to be there. I actually wanted a, a degree in graphic design, but oh. it wasn't offered as an online scholarship, which was kind of dumb because all the classes were online anyway. But it's a whole hullabaloo <laughs> that eventually at the end when I was graduating, they're like, oh, it's an online degree now. I'm like, y'all suck. So I am technically a web design and developer, sans the developer because I can't code to save my life, except for like basic <laughs> HTML and some like, mini like I can edit my Shopify store, but I cannot actually make one. So a lot of my You classes... know, just enough to be dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've actually broken my store a couple of times. So uh, <laughs> sorry if you ever see like really wonky things happening, just come back in like 30 minutes. It'll be, it'll be fixed. I focused a lot on graphics design. Like, I really wanted to learn about that. So, like, typography, um, mm -hmm. you know, like, basic graphic design classes and all of that. I, because I, I know that there's, like, a lot of demand for, for designers, especially when it comes to things like YouTubers who need banners and stuff, video game streamers. I've actually done a few logos for businesses, for streamers. Oh. I think I am still technically the um, head of branding for uh, Gaming Source Network, which is a YouTube channel. So I, I took them from Stadia Source into Gaming Source Network, did a whole rebrand and all of that. So I've always really liked drawing. Um, mm -hmm. I've always really liked designing things. As I was taking my web design classes, um, I had to take 
in entre entrepreneurship class where we actually had to start a legit business, like actually start a business. So we had to wow. get um, filed with the state. We had to get our names registered and all of that. Most people ended up doing like affiliate websites where they could just, you know, share links and write blogs and stuff. But I was like, ah, that's not my kind of thing, even though I really enjoy writing speeches. <laughs> you would think I'd be a great <laughs> blog writer. I am not. I ramble. So I decided to start a chain mail and scale mail store. <laughs> so I did. Cool. I sourced in all the materials. I built the website. And my teacher was kind of like, you're doing weird stuff. I'm like, I don't know. I think it's fun. <laughs> and I made some really cool stuff. And so, in fact, actually, I wonder if I can show you that Slytherin banner back there. That's all scale oh, mail. Oh, wow. It's all just stuff that I want to try. Our family motto is it never hurts to ask and it never hurts to try. Something we always try to teach our daughters is that it's okay to try. And as long as you do your best, it doesn't matter if you are the best, you know, because if you don't try, you're not going to know what you like. You're not going to know what you don't like, or if right. you're even good at it or bad at it. And if you're bad at it, who cares? At least you tried. So our, our whole policy is, you know, it never hurts to ask. Even if the answer turns out to be no, like that's literally the worst thing that could happen is somebody says no. So, you know, I was like, you know, I, I want to do web designs or I want to do graphic design. So the closest I could get was web design. I wanted to do uh, scale mail and chain mail armor. And that, you know, that uh, worked out pretty good, but it didn't, you know, go very far. And then we're like, okay, let's try laser engraving, which led to all of this. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, we're making a video game because we just want to try. Um, you know, writing a book because I just want to try, you know, doing a uh, dropship apparel because I just want to try. Like a lot of it is really, I just want to try it out. And some of it sticks. A lot of it doesn't. Can't even tell you how many failed projects I probably have downstairs <laughs> stuffed in that closet, but it's fine. Maybe part of it came from, I did 14 years of soccer. I was really good. Like I was so good at soccer, but it didn't leave a lot of room for trying other things uh -huh. soccer was during Just... bowling season soccer was during you know swimming season soccer was like all year round because you did high school and then you did club and so it was constant and I did piano and that was full-time as well and so it was just kind of like you know there was only two things that I ever really did growing up love my parents thank you for supporting me in that and you know putting me on that path and making those things happen thank you but now as an adult I'm kind of like I can just try things because <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Really, if you have an idea for something, this is going to you, this is going to any of the viewers out there. If you have an idea to just try something, just do it. One of the things we learned in the entre entre entrepreneurship <laughs> class, I always say like entrepreneur, which is not how it's said. Uh, There's a lot of is, weird vowels in there. There's a lot of it's... weird vowels, yeah. Is ready, fire, aim. Get yourself ready, just do it, and then fix it along the way. Because too huh. many people take too long to just aim it and get it perfect, tweak this, tweak that, and suddenly it's years later and they're like, well, now I can't even try it because I took too long. If you think you might like something, okay, try it. If hmm. you think you're going to be really good at something, try it. Like, honestly, that's how I got into all of these things is that's I fantastic. asked and I tried it. That's my long-winded answer there. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's awesome. I really struggle with perfectionism and wanting things to be exactly so before I jump into doing something. And that's honestly one of the one of my struggles with my YouTube channels. I'm not as I'm not nowhere near as consistent as I would like to be in getting content out. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that is because I want to make sure everything is set up i want to like get the lighting and i want to get mm -hmm. all of the sound and like make sure everything is exactly what i want it to be before i go and do something yeah i've had to really really struggle with the concept that done is better than perfect yes and i i feel like i'm getting better uh hopefully this next year with all of the sanderson stuff that will put more of a fire under me and uh, at least a consistent thing that is yes. going to happen every month. So I'm going to have stuff to that I'm going to have to get through. I but I love that. Yeah, so. That's kind of similar to what we're going to be doing too, is just sticking to the schedule, right? Uh -huh. Not perfect, but just getting it done. Because So like your little video of unboxing the Larkin piece, I love that because there was a bit of spontaneity to it too. You're like, where's my slicer? I don't know where it is. And that was kind of fun as opposed to you having already having something on hand. I was right. going to like this, 
this makes you feel more real too. Like that's kind of what people want from yeah. people more like you who are your channel as opposed to like new rock stars who has a plethora right. of people who work for them or IGN. From people like you, they, they want that honest stuff, whether you know, they, mm -hmm. they don't expect you to be perfect. In fact, I think people will connect better with you if, you know, there isn't perfection, if there's just genuine interaction and doing it. I'm glad I'm recording this or else I would like be taking notes. This is, <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> Did you originally start licensing with Dragonsteel because you knew that there was nothing wrong with asking? Yeah, so... Like, I mean, that was pretty much it. Yeah. I mean, our, our whole philo there's a lot of things that have happened to us in our, you know, six years of marriage that came around simply because we asked the license for, for example, and I, I didn't plan for this to happen. I made the, the original display, which looks absolutely horrendous. And I love it. Except I don't think I have it anymore, which is a little bit sad. It looks terrible. I made it. I'm like, this is so cool. And so I shared it with people on Kickstarter comments. That's what it was. I shared it on the Kickstarter oh. comments. And someone's like, can I put this on Reddit? And I was like, sure. What's Reddit? <laughs> and, <they're, laughs> and so they're like, okay, I'm going to put it on Reddit. And so then I was like, well, I guess I need a Reddit account. So then I went onto Reddit and made an account. And I looked down where they, they posted it. And I commented on it. And then people in the, in the Kickstarter and then in the, in the Reddit. And then apparently it got shared into like the collector's Discord. So then I was like, okay, I got to be on like Discord now too. <laughs> and then people were sharing it on Twitter. So I was like, I got to be on like Twitter, like actually now. And, and then people were like, can we buy it? I was like, oh crap. Uh, prob probably not, but let me ask. And so I asked and they're like, uh -huh. no, but talk to our agent and work it out with him. And so mm. I did. I kind of bugged the poor guy, um, Joshua Bilms, <laughs> fantastic guy. I sent him an email and it had attached images, but clearly it specifically states like in his contact form, do not attach images. We will not open it. And so I was like, oh crap. <laughs> I didn't realize it until like three days later. So I sent him another email, the exact same one, and also apologized for sending him another email. I was like, it's because I attached images to the first one. <laughs> he sends me an email back, which seemed a little exasperated. He's kind of like, I received your emails. Chill out. <laughs> <laughs> kind of deal, right? <laughs> I'm passing you on to the person who handles these kinds of things. Oh, crap, this is happening. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, it took like another six months after that for anything to really happen because I had to answer a few questions because mm -hmm. at that point, I really only had Dragonwood gifts on Etsy. I kind of had, you know, a couple of Shopify stores floating. I actually had uh, Ready Gamer One, which is where I do like my gamer apparel stuff on Shopify. So so I actually turned that into a different wood website and then I made a second wood website for Dragon <laughs> Wood Shop. So I had to like set that whole website up mm -hmm. and figure out even how to like actually use Shopify cuz I'd kind of put Dragon Wood gifts onto Shopify but like not really because nobody really shops on Shopify unless they're there specifically for that item. And so there was the whole, you know, I had to answer their questions then i had to send in samples and i had to wait for them to look at the samples then i had to wait for their responses to the samples and i had to respond to their responses then we had to like exchange like documents and everything to make sure everything was in order and then fine tooth comb reading the entire document this is like a 30 page document by the way i mean this is the kind of thing for me is like i want to make sure i understand exactly what i'm getting into because this was the first real like legal binding contract in that way that i was like i don't uh -huh. want to like i mean i will sell my soul to dragon steel sure but i don't want to sell my soul to dragon steel <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was just utter insanity and it all came from somebody asked and so i was like i'll ask i guess and like i didn't expect a yes uh -huh. i didn't expect even people to really like it i was really just making it for me and for my husband because i was like these coins otherwise they're just gonna you know sit on the shelf or sit in a drawer or whatever it's not gonna look cool and so i'm looking at the end pages of way of kings and i'm like this this actually fits these coins i was like hmm, i wonder if i can make this into it and this was the first time i translated art into something wooden like this mm -hmm. with these layers and these textures and these engravings. Like I'd done Catan boards and I had done a Game of Thrones risk board and I had done, you know, a couple of custom orders for like other board games. And so like, I wasn't new to doing like translations like this, but this was like the first time I'd really taken 
that kind of art and turned it into not that art. I was like going insane because I'm also trying to like make these samples because I had the original, but then I was like, okay, I know how to make it better. But this was also before I had discovered the industrial double-sided tape that I use for, <laughs> for holding it all together. It's uh. an industrial wood-to-wood application tape specifically mm. meant to hold these pieces together. So I was using so like- So were you just like sticking everything with wood glue or- I was. Oh, was... that would that would be <gasps> nightmarish. It was. I can't even tell you how many times I had to clamp and unclamp and unclamp and clamp. And I was like- you know, glue, but I mean, wood glue comes off pretty easy, right? But I yeah. was, like, using, like, a, a paintbrush to get, like, all the fine lines, and I was, like, going insane. And I was, like, I am going to go nuts if I actually have to make more than these two using uh. wood glue. <laughs> and so I was, like, okay, there's got to be something better. And so that's how I found the double-sided tape. The whole process, I really should, like, journal this down somewhere. That's what I should do. That'll be my <laughs> actual blog post, is I'm going to blog this journey from memory so it's there's going to be some skewed stuff in there probably <laughs> but i'm going to blog this now it's going to be on dragon wood shop ah, sorry i i tend to ramble i <clears throat> i i'm excited just to be here too because i'm like ah i, <laughs> I, I love other nerds <laughs> so hi <laughs> my people yes ah oh, man i want to get to one of these dragon con dragon steel cons one of these days Ooh. <laughs> that, i mean the last one was fantastic the only other Sander fan I've met in person, other than my husband, is is MG, um, which I don't know if, if you've if you've met her in it. I don't. Are you? You're not really in the discords much, are you? Uh, I'm in apparently not the same discords. Uh, I are think you in I am. Seventeenth shard. I'm on seventeenth shard. I'm not okay. very active there. I have my own discord, which everyone oh, should okay. join. Um, Do it, and also uh, like I'm this on... video and subscribe to this channel and. <laughs> yes, all the things. All the things. <laughs> I'm on several other discords. Mm. Uh, I think I am on the Sanderson Collector Discord, but again, I'm not very active. Okay. Most of my focus yeah. on Discord is on my own. That makes uh, sense. So if anyone wants to hang out and interact with me, that's the best way to do it. As I'm editing all of this, I'm going to be like, oh, that's a Discord she mentioned. I'm not on that. Yeah. <laughs> <Find it. laughs> yeah, so there's the seven, there's 17 Shard, which is mm -hmm. way bigger. It actually is a little it's intimidating huge. to me. Yeah. Um, I occasionally go into the Chicken Scouts Discord, which is kind of the official Kickstarter Discord for all of Brandon okay. Sanderson's uh, Kickstarters and stuff. Um, you can also get like a direct questions for like the Dragon Steel Team uh, channel in there, so you can like directly ask questions on that. And then there's the Collectors Discord, uh, which is where mm -hmm. I am primarily at. There's a lady in there. Her name is MG. She actually only lives like forty minutes from me, so she's the oh. only other Sander fan that I've met in person. <laughs> <laughs> I, which is why I really want to get to Dragon Steel Con because I just I want to go there and I just want to geek out with everybody. Next year, uh, which will be for the release of Defiant, yes, oh, which uh, I, is oh, I'm so excited for. It's it's, it's probably going to be bigger than this last one simply because this last one was the first like real official big one. Yeah, because uh, they like but then doubled their their numbers, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they originally had 3,000 tickets, yeah. and then they were like, this is not enough. So many mm -hmm. people want more, and so they released 3,000 more, and I'm not sure if they sold out of the second wave, but they got they close. I think they sold at least half last I had yeah. looked at it, which was quite a while before the convention. But yeah, and so there's Defiant next year, which I'm flipping mm -hmm. stoked about. The Skyward series is actually <laughs> the second best series from Brandon Warbreaker being a series <laughs> <laughs> eventually <yeah. laughs> <And> Skyward <laughs> but no I, I I just I actually I adore I adore the Skyward series so much mm. um managed to get my oldest to read it too and she she loved it and she was by like yeah. ah I get what doom slug is now because we have the doom slug plush <laughs> she's like I get it <laughs> I am I, I had a moment today while I was working on um working on a script for another video mm -hmm. and my my oldest son came in who's mm -hmm. four Oh, and cute. Uh, he comes in and he's like looking all all the books and I'm I just picked him up and set him on my lap and I'm like I'm so excited for you to read these stories, <laughs> right? In like five more years, five or six at years, least. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I'm so excited to talk about these with you. He's yes. like, okay, cool, yeah, yeah, whatever, Dad. Because he's four and so he yeah. doesn't care. But <laughs> we got Defiant next year. And then next year, and then Stormlight, Stormlight Five, Archive Five, which is going to be insanity. 
oh, it's going to be so nuts. I actually have no idea how he's going to manage to convince them to keep it as one book. Like, (laughs) this may be the first time there's U.S. split editions. Mm. I mean, yeah, every single... Already already the Rhythm of War pages are, like, thin. (laughs) It's like onion skin. Yeah! (laughs) Yeah! Every single book in Stormlight has gotten increasingly longer. Yes. So if the trend continues, like they're going to have to make different printing machines in order to bind right. everything together. New binding techniques. We'll call it the yeah. Sanderson stitch. That was legitimately a like limiting factor on how long previous books could be. Yep. And they were like hitting that upper limit yep. with page counts. I know they tried to pay so. him to cut it in half and he's like, nah. <laughs> yeah. We've got and a then lot Sander of things ending up. Years. This is going to be crazy. Oh, it's going to be nuts. Cuz so we've had Lost Metal, end of an mm. era. We got Defiant, end of a series, like whole end of a series. thing probably. I think that's the end end of it. I think there will be more Skyward books, but like the main Skyward story is going to be told and yeah. Defiant. Yeah. yeah. And then there's going to be the end of what I'm just calling Era 1 of Stormlight Archives. Absolutely. And the, we've the also first got... Arc. Yeah. But also, up until then, we're going to have all the secret projects. We're going to have a couple more novellas, so like Horn Eater <laughs> and stuff. We're going to have heaven knows what. Half a dozen Kickstarters. Little did I know where this whole path would lead when my husband <laughs> was listening to Warbreaker. That's one of the really impressive things to me, jumping back to your licensing with Dragon sure. Scroll specifically. Is that everything else, like all of the other official partners with Dragonsteel that we've seen, have mm-hmm. been like full companies. Yes. You've got like partnering with Brotherwise. You've got mm-hmm. partnering with uh, Foam, Nabu Games or Crafty Vitaly, Games. Nabu, Crafty, yeah, Forge yep. Foam. Like, ag- like huge, not necessarily huge, but uh, they're, not insignificant they're more, like, companies. They're medium sized. So they're not yeah. small because they've got like probably 30 or 40 people or and they've got machines mm-hmm. and so they got manufacturing and stuff like that. But they're not right. large corporations. And so it's it's really cool to meet you, the person oh. that is the single individual who has a license with Dragonsteel. I think that's just that's really really impressive. Thank you. <laughs> I think I just managed to get in at a lucky time. Had, like, this <laughs> happened now with where Brandon is, it just would have been a no. It was while Brandon was popular enough, but not a worldwide sensation like he became after the Secret Project Kickstarter. Thank you again, Carly, for uh, your incredible yeah. Secret Tasted gift. The ornaments are currently on my tree yes. uh, with <laughs> the the other dragon steel ornaments from the past several years. You have so them they all? are in good company. Oh, nice. I do. I mean, I'm I'm local. I live uh, yeah. uh, like 20 miles away from Brandon, Shoot. and <laughs> it's it's real easy for me to get stuff. Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, but this this is gorgeous, and everyone should go and purchase things from Carly because she does incredible work. Speaking of, as a reminder, the absolutely gorgeous uh, on this side of me uh, coin displays. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh. Sorry, microphone. The the gorgeous night radiant corn displays won't be available come January because mm-hmm. Carly's license is going to expire. Yes. And then it will be illegal for you to buy them. Yes. So <laughs> if you want these, which you do, I know you do. <laughs> they're incredible. Thank you. You got to order by New Year's. December 31st at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is when I am closing off. By the way, Ari has said they will be buying with one second to go. (laughs) So (laughs) good luck trying to beat them to being the very last person. But yes, I'm closing it at 10 p.m. because quite frankly, I don't want to stay up until midnight to turn (laughs) off the the order. And if, if you're from the U.S., what are you even doing on my website past 10 p.m. Eastern time anyway? Go have your New Year's Eve party. <laughs> Responsibly. Go, ce- go away. Go celebrate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> December 31st at 10 p.m. Eastern. That is when it cuts off. Go order. Do it, I dare you. Because you want to anyway. Dragonwoodshop.com. Indeed. Link will be in the description. Go check out everything that Carly makes because basically it's all gorgeous. Pin displays, 
We got the book it, bookends are coming in January. We've got back there. As you said, you you do okay. have a coaster display. Yes, actually, I can probably so. Pew. So we got two of the car display parts. Um, there's nice. two smaller ones that go with it. We got the coaster display back there. So <laughs> once again, for for those of you who backed the Kickstarter or who have gotten these from Dragon Steel in later days. You can have a really lovely way to display these. Get Carly's stuff, because it's awesome. Thank you, Carly, for talking with me today. This has been fantastic. Big thank you to my patrons, specifically Doug, who has excellent taste in tacos. Patrons actually get to see my videos up to a week in advance. If you would like that opportunity, please consider supporting me on Patreon. I'd really appreciate it. We've got a whole bunch of stuff coming in 2023, the year of the Sanderson. So be sure to subscribe and hit that little bell so you don't miss any of it. We've got a brand new novella coming probably next week, which means read and find out. Brandon, you're breaking my heart, <laughs> but I'm never going to give you up. <laughs> oh, you know man. the rules, and so do I. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs>